today, the United States and Turkey have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. The Turkish side will pause Operation Peace Spring in order to allow for the withdrawal of YPG forces from the safe zone for 120 hours. All military operations under Operation Peace Spring will be paused and Operation Peace Spring will be halted entirely on completion of the withdrawal. Our administration has already been in contact with Syrian Defense Forces, and we have already begun to facilitate their safe withdrawal from the nearly 20-mile wide safe zone area south of the Turkish border in Syria. Let me say this. Uh, also includes an agreement by Turkey to engage in no military action against the community of Kobani. And in addition, the United States and Turkey have both mutually committed to a peaceful resolution and future for the safe zone, working on an international basis to ensure that peace and security defines this border region. Of Syria. Both sides are aware in this trade war that nothing really gets done until the principles are at the table, and it has been a while since they were. But yes, look, a sense of, uh, of slightly improved optimism from quite a low bar, I will say, going into this. The president saying uh, that the negotiations so far have been going very well. Sources telling uh, our White House team that progress yesterday, which involved uh, uh, the Vice Premier Liu He and the U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer, uh, that they, they went better than expected. Apparently, they blew through a planned uh, lunch break, such as the, the momentum of the talks. But, but you're right in saying that, that really the sense is that we're not going to get an overarching deal here. There's not going to be real progress on the structural issues that the U.S. has been pushing for. The real core of this trade war from the beginning, which are things like uh, intellectual property rights in China, market access, uh, industrial subsidies, uh, forced technology transfer, all of those things that frankly have bipartisan support and support even from businesses in the U.S., uh, Julia. Really, they're looking more at things like, you know, currency agreements, perhaps a pact that would avoid China uh, devaluing its currency, increased Chinese agricultural purchases, which would uh, reduce that, that trade deficit that President Trump uh, hates so much, and, and anything really that will avert the, the tariff increase that we're expecting uh, on October 15th. That is really what they're thinking here. I do stand before you, as was noted here, uh, really uh, having achieved greatness. I mean, I'm not just an overrated General, I am the greatest, the world's most overrated. <laughs> and this is in no small part. I will tell you, uh, I, I owe New York. I owe New York for this because Senator Schumer, have I thank you uh, for bringing my name up in a rather contentious meeting in Washington <laughs> where this grew out of. Um, so I would just tell you too that I'm honored to be considered that by, by Donald Trump because he also called Meryl Streep an overrated actress. <laughs> so I guess I'm the Meryl Streep of generals. <laughs> and, and frankly, that sounds pretty good to me. Uh, and you do have to admit uh, that between me and Meryl, at least we've had some victories. <clears throat> <laughs> and some of you were kind during the reception and asked me, you know, uh, if this bothered me to have been rated this way. Uh, based on what Donald Trump said, I said, of course not. I'd earned my spurs on the battlefield, Martin, as you pointed out, and Donald Trump earned his spurs in a letter from a doctor. So. Today, the United States and Turkey have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. The Turkish side will pause Operation Peace Spring in order to allow for the withdrawal of YPG forces from the safe zone for 120 hours. All military operations under Operation Peace Spring will be paused, and Operation Peace Spring will be halted entirely on completion of the withdrawal. Our administration has already been in contact with Syrian Defense Forces, and we have already begun to facilitate their safe withdrawal from the nearly 20-mile wide safe zone area.
south of the Turkish border in Syria. Let me say this uh, also includes an agreement by Turkey to engage in no military action against the community of Kobani. And in addition, the United States and Turkey have both mutually committed to a peaceful resolution and future for the safe zone, working on an international basis to ensure that peace and security defines this border region of Syria. I sent Vice President Pence and Secretary of State Pompeo to lead an American delegation to meet with President Erdogan of Turkey. They got there today and it did work. Without spilling a drop of American blood, not one drop of American blood. We've all agreed on a pause or a ceasefire in the border region of Syria. And it was unconventional what I did. I said, they're going to have to fight a little while. Sometimes you have to let them fight a little while. Then people find out how tough the fighting is. These guys know right up here. These guys know. Right? Sometimes you have to let them fight. It's like two kids in a lot. You got to let them fight, and then you pull them apart. But it was unconventional. But they fought for a few days, and it was pretty vicious. And the Kurds, who are our friends, and Turkey's our friend. But they fought. It was tougher. I mean, it was nasty. And you couldn't make a deal for 15, think of it, for 15 years, 20 years, they couldn't make a deal. The Kurds didn't want to move. Turkey didn't want to budge. And Turkey was having a lot of bad things happen from this region, in all fairness to Turkey. They were having a lot of bad, but they didn't want to. Now, all of a sudden, they're fighting, and it's not fun having bullets going all over the place. And we went there, and we said, we want to pause. And the Kurds have been terrific. They're going to move back a little bit. We're going to keep ISIS all nice and locked up, OK? We're going to find more of them. And Turkey's all set, and President Erdogan was great, and we're going to take the worst sanctions and tariffs and everything that I put on the country. We put the worst the — wor I mean, I don't think they could have economically survived, but that doesn't matter. President Erdogan was a gentleman. He understood it. But without a little tough love — you know what tough love is, right? Without a little tough love. They would have never made this deal. By the way, there was a report that we were worried that the money wouldn't if, — if we didn't pay out the money, it would be illegal, okay? It would be unlawful. Um, that is one of those things that is, has that little shred of truth in it um, that, that makes it look a lot worse than it really is. Uh, we were concerned about — in our — over at OMB about an impoundment. And I know I just put half of you folks to, to bed, but there's a — there's the Budget Control Act uh, impound, budget Control Empowerment Act of 1974 says that if Congress s appropriates money, you have to spend it. Okay, at least that's how it's interpreted by some folks. And we knew that that money either had to go out the door by the end of September, or we had to have a really, really good reason not to do it. And that was the legality of the issue. But to be clear, what you just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the into the Democratic server. Uh, happened as well. We, we do we do that all the time with foreign policy. We were holding up money at the same time for uh, what was it? The Northern Triangle com countries. We were holding up aid at the Northern Triangle countries so that they uh, so that they would change their policies on immigration. By, by the way, and this speaks to it. This speaks to an important. I'm sorry. This speaks to an important point because I heard this yesterday. And I can never remember the gentleman who tested. Was it McKinney the guy? Is that his name? From the, I don't, don't know him. He testified yesterday. Yeah. And if you go and if you believe the news reports, okay, because we've not seen any transcripts of this. The only transcript I've seen was Sondland's testimony this morning. This morning, if you read the news reports and you believe them, what did McKinney say yesterday? Well, McKinney said yesterday that he was really upset with the political influence in foreign policy. That was one of the reasons he was so upset about this. And I have news for everybody: get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. I'm talking Just to Mr. Carl. Uh, that is going to happen. Elections have consequences. And foreign policy is going to change from the Obama administration to the Trump administration. And what you're seeing now, I believe, is a group of mostly career, politi uh, career bureaucrats who are saying, you know what, I don't like President Trump's politics, so I'm going to participate in this witch hunt that they're, that they're undertaking on the Hill. 
elections do have consequences, and they should, and your foreign policy is going to change. Obama did it in one way, we're doing it a different way, and there's no problem with that.